All right, <clears throat> so today I'm going to be doing a bit of drawing and uh, speaking like I normally do. And this drawing of 1984 is here about the fascist um, Facebook and social media sites like Twitter, constantly on the head of this particular dude. I'm still f trying to finish it. It's been one of the not one of the longest drawings ever taken, but one of the longest drawings in terms of being um, kind of pulled away from it and having to do other stuff. At a moment, since the last time I think I've shown it, um, I've done like detail, but not too much light on it. Uh, so I've done detail on the, actually I better put light on it actually. So you can see there's detailing on the phone and the boot, um, glasses, the keys and the money and all that kind of stuff and on the face as well to a certain degree. Um, so what I'm going to talk about today is <clears throat> a couple of things. Um, while I'm drawing, I will be talking about this story about the English flag and uh, there's a particular Sikh uh, guy in East London that um, kind of got pulled up on putting the English flag out during the England football games, <laughs> a bit stupid. And, um, and my other favourite topic, which is... Uh, uh, racism and uh, <laughs> extremism and stuff and so what I'm going to do first before I kind of go on I'll just describe what I'm doing so people who are interested in the art can just uh, look at the art bit there's a bit too much light going on here to be honest with you so uh, what I'm doing is like this is a drawing that's more from my imagination uh, obviously I use reference points so if I want to do say like a 50 pence piece, I'll get a 50 pence piece and then uh, draw it like this. So I've got at least got something to look at or something. I can't just do it all from my imagination, but the concept is from my imagination. Um, normally when I'm doing a drawing that's just straight up uh, from a picture, I don't have to worry about a lot of things. So this is just done straight from a picture, kind of from a picture, the background's my own. Um, Obviously, from a picture, from a picture, uh, Indian girl is from a picture. Now, when I'm doing this uh, particular drawing here, because I'm uh, doing it from my own kind of imagination, I have more of an issue. Uh, sorry for people who are bored of art, but I have more of an issue in terms of uh, figuring out uh, light sources. So this is one of the biggest problems when I'm doing a drawing, drawing from my imagination. It's figuring out light sources. So I know that the window is here. I better not put that actually, my thing is, so the window is here and so the light will be coming through, hitting the shoe um, and everything here will be lighter, obviously um, I wonder if I should put my light on, actually I better actually yeah it's better, uh, so everything here is going to be lighter and so you can see uh, all of that is going to be lighter and the glasses and then you have this area here getting darker and darker got more detailing here that I need to still do. So I still got quite a lot of detailing to do, to be honest with you. So what I'm going to do while I'm talking is actually, um, poor dude. So I've actually done some more detailing on the face as well, as you might be able to see. I don't know whether I should take the thing here. So you can probably see, um, you know, I've added more details into the eyes. I'm going to be adding more skin texture and stuff to kind of make it look more realistic. Uh, my drawings that are from my imagination don't normally look as realistic as some of my other drawings. So as you can see that lady's face, I just copied a photo so it looks uh, very realistic. And actually the old man up there as well. But when I'm doing stuff from my imagination, it doesn't look as realistic. I don't know if I should take that off. Um, so uh, what I'm going to be doing uh, today is that I've already used pencil for most of it. Now what I'm doing is start to use charcoal. And what I need to do is to start detailing in uh, this area here. Don't want to make it too dark because that is one of my biggest issues. I normally darken my drawings too much, ruining a couple of them I've done in the past. So I keep putting on my light, taking off my light. I better leave it on actually. And so, uh, which is not a good thing. Now before, you know, I don't know why, but a lot of people don't believe it's me. I don't know why, because it's not rocket science, you know. I have people at the park thinking, I can't believe it's you. You know, it's just a pencil, you can see, pencil and the artwork. I'm not doing brain surgery or anything, so I don't know why people are so surprised. Maybe they just think I'm really uh, talentless, or I can't believe I've got any talent. Maybe that's my own fault, because I'm not portraying myself properly. Um, so, uh, 
what I'm going to do while I'm doing that is talk about a subject. Um, just turn that bloody light off. So, uh, Seacona um, puts up a St George's flag outside his shop in East London, and then uh, he's getting berated by some, I don't know, disgruntled uh, immigrant or somebody from an immigrant background who doesn't like the fact that he's uh, using the St George's flag, yeah, even though it's a football time. Uh, so he's kind of berating him and sent him a letter. Don't know exactly what the nationality is, but some people are saying he's Pakistani because he wants to put a Pakistani flag up instead. Now, this is just stupid. You know, it's football and um, the flag is the flag of the country. So if someone wants to put it up and celebrate football, or even if it's not football and they want to put their flag up, let them do it, for God's sake. It's not... Um, by the way, I'm using one hand, so uh, I've got to get more a better equipment so I can draw properly, but this is just with one hand. And so what I'm doing right now, is just so that you can know, is charcoal, and I'm just going to be darkening the edges uh, so that the drawing... Um, like I said, the light source is coming this way, so I need to make the back of the boot more dark and keep this bit light. Still got to do detailing there. And so um, it's just stupid, to be honest with you. I mean, you're going to cause resentment from the indigenous population if they cannot even fly their own flag. Uh, and if someone wants to fly, I'm not much of a flag uh, waver, to be honest. You never have been, probably never will be. Um, so it's not something that really affects me. I wouldn't really, not really, don't really like waving flags for some reason. Um, so if someone wants to do it, let them do it for God's sakes. Don't start crying and you know saying that it's an oppressive uh, symbol. Now, uh, I think the you know people need to start taking back the English flag and start just you know putting it out on their windows and stuff so people start getting used to seeing it. Uh, and that it's not seen as some kind of racist symbol. Remember, um, you know, there are certain um, symbols, like even like the swastika, for God's sake, has now become synonymous with Nazi Germany, but for thousands of years it was actually uh, a symbol of good luck in India and other places. And now you can't have it, uh, or if you do, you're, you know, people are shocked out of their minds. But if you go to places in India, you know, they're all over the bloody place. And so I think people need to start kind of reclaiming um, uh, the, the flag and what it means and retake it from um, the, not, the, the racists who probably did hijack it for their own political purposes and we need to take it back. So people from all kind of um, backgrounds should just start, um, you know, using it. Uh, support England during, during the football. I mean, it's just freaking football for God's sake. You know, stop making such a big deal out of everything, you know, you're complicating everything so much. This is why this country is in such a mess, because, you know, little things are being blown out of proportion, and, uh, you know, people are just getting pissed off about it. Now, these are blending stumps, uh, just for the artists. So what I'm doing is blending stumps, and what I'm doing is just uh, blending in the dark black, so that it, um, what I call, kind of doesn't look a mess. And uh, it's probably better if I don't talk too much, but I am going to talk. And one of the other things I'm going to talk about is my favourite subject, uh, race and racism. And I do like talking about taboo subjects. I've got a very weird kind of sense of humour. And I love making people feel uncomfortable. That's why I, <laughs> I talk about very uh, taboo subjects. Um, I just enjoy it. I don't know, there's something weird about me. I just enjoy making people feel uncomfortable for some reason, I don't know why. Uh, and so, um, one of the things is that um, I think um, one of the reasons why the UK is having so much problems is that people are just not talking uh, from all sides. And uh, one of the things I think that really kind of will uh, mend bridges and make people kind of like uh, be more... Uh, integrated and feel like they can talk is uh, humor and so there's a you know if you look at this guy here um just so that i can think he look at this guy here yeah what a nice guy and he is a, sh a sheikh or something like that a muslim scholar and um you know he's just a father of christmas which is really nice 
But he got so much stick for this. His name's uh, Abri Lent. And he got a lot of stick from this from the the crazies. <laughs> so all he did was put a mask it's on. It's a good suggestion. I thought, yeah, why not? Since yeah. It is Christmas. Let's. So here he is. Santa. And so this lunatic here. Real name, and he's known to the media by that name as well. So he went crazy saying it's like the worst thing you could ever do. It's pretty much going to send you to hell for doing that. And uh, this kind of stuff is, uh, these kind of uh, guys, the more forward thinking one with the the, uh, the Christmas thing on is the way forward. Because you need to be able to kind of like joke about things and talk about things and celebrate other people's. Um... I mean, just saying happy Christmas is not the end of the world. You know, you don't have to believe in Christmas to say happy Christmas to someone. Um, or happy Eid or happy Diwali, you know, but a lot of... Muslims are having a problems because of their faith. Some of these kind of hardliners are saying you can't even say that, otherwise you're going to go to the hellfire. Um, so we need to start kind of like um, really assessing uh, this kind of backward thinking. Uh, one of the things that I find very frustrating is that you know people are demonising uh, people from both sides, and I've been guilty of that as well. I'm not going to lie. Uh, obviously, when it comes to grooming, I'm pretty hard line. People are going to say I'm a hypocrite because uh, I'm not uh, living by my principles. But in terms of the grooming, I know too much to kind of say that um, people are not going to change my mind in that particular aspect. Yeah, um, I know too much to uh, be kind of bamboozled by PC bullshit. And so, uh, what's uh, well, one of the things is that people are not talking. So you have one side who are the Tommy Robinson fans who are looking at the uh, Muslims thinking they're all jihadis and then you have the, the the Muslims who are then looking at all the Tommy Robinson fans and saying that they're all Nazi racists. Now in reality, in reality um, what I found out from talking to people from both sides is that um, it's, it's not the case. It's like, you know, you have I would say that, you know, from my, this is my personal experience, so it doesn't mean it's, uh, it's actually 100% um, correct, but, you know, from both sides, you have extremists, yeah? And so from the Tommy Robinson side, you might have around 10% that are full on racists, and I'm not denying that. And um, maybe, maybe less, maybe more. And then you have on um, the rest of the 90% are just basically people that are concerned uh, about things, uh, legitimate concerns, by the way. And uh, then you have on the Muslim side, once again, only around 10% are probably full on kind of like jihadis or extremists, but the rest are just normal Muslims that just want to have a quiet life and just do their daily business. Yeah. Now, what happens is because both sides have uh, polarized each other and not talking, both sides think the other side are the demon. Now, uh, the way I kind of break through that is to sort of like um, joke about and stuff. And I did a video, um, as you can see uh, here, where I said Raj confronted by racist Tommy Robinson fans. Now, if you look at this guy here uh, and you saw him down the street yeah, and he's mates, you might think, oh, they're racist skinheads. Yeah. But when I spoke to them, they're just nice dudes, uh, you know, polite, nice. Um, I spoke to them. I didn't think they were racist in any way. Uh, do they support Tommy Robinson? Yeah, I support Tommy Robinson. I'm, I don't, I'm not racist. And so you have these guys here yeah, that, you know, obviously when the Muslims see them at Tommy Robinson event, they think, oh my God, these guys hate me. Uh, they must, you know, want to kill me and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and so what's, what's, what's happening is that people like Ali Dawa and all these kind of guys are uh, what I call fanning the finding the problem by saying that you know Tommy Robinson is a new Hitler and obviously is not you know you're really degrading um, you know the word of what a Nazi is because a Nazi is not Tommy Robinson um, and so you then have uh, on the other side obviously you have the Muslims as well um, and the Tommy Robinson fans see someone with a long beard uh, dressed in a kind of thingy like a phobe or whatever it's called and they're looking at it and thinking, oh, they're a freaking jihadi, you know, support ISIS or support this. And they know, I mean, people like Shamsi, them lot don't support ISIS. You know, I don't really agree with their ideology, 
but they don't support ISIS, you know, and um, they just want to practice their faith, you know. I might be naive in thinking that, I don't know, but that's just the uh, kind of my kind of viewpoint. And um, I'll give an example. I saw this particular guy uh, on a video. If you have a look, yeah, where is he? This guy here, this big black guy, six foot six, built like a tank, uh, saying that um, to slay the kuffar on the video, yeah. And damn, I, I then saw him. And remember, you know, I'd, I'd, I'd never ever spoken to him. I'd just seen him on a video. And then I was walking past him one day at night uh, at Speaker's Corner. And I have to admit, it was one of the only times I kind of like thought about like turning around and walking back. Because I was like, I don't want to walk past this dude, yeah? Because he's huge and he had his hoodie up and stuff. And um, last week or the week before, I can't remember, I was sitting in McDonald's. And guess who walks in and sits right next to me? Uh, that particular dude. And um, I could have like got up and walked away and uh, you know done the thing and said, oh my God, he's, he's, he's crazy, I'm gonna walk away. But for some reason I was like, all right, let me just sit down and uh, hopefully I don't say anything to get my head kicked in. And guess what? Ended up talking to him and he's one of the nicest guys I've spoken to. Very, very nice dude. Um, like, very polite, very, I mean, I would actually say he was quite, I don't want to kind of like embarrass him, but he was like one of those kind of gentle giants. Like I was shocked. I, I was like, oh my God, you know, if I'd never spoken to him, I would have been terrified him, terrified of him, of, of him for, you know, God knows how long. And this is one of the things that I think is happening in the UK as a whole. People are not talking and they're kind of demonizing uh, each side. Uh, yeah, I still got to do a bit more. Sorry, uh, the demonizer heat size. So I still got to do add extra detail to here. Um, here as well. Uh, so they're demonizing each side. So, like I said, I've used a reference point. I don't know. It's hard to kind of make a 50p coin look like a 50p bloody coin. Let's have a look if it does look like it. It needs to be a bit thinner, to be honest, you. I think it's a little bit too thick. I'll have to thin it down. So yeah, people are not talking. And so when you do talk and you speak to somebody and on a, on a kind of one-to-one -one basis, uh, you'd be surprised how much you'd have in common. And I think this is what uh, both the Muslim community and the, the wider kind of community need to start doing. I think it's a massive problem if, if people are not talking. I think it's more pronounced up north rather than London. I think people in London uh, I think we've got a different viewpoint and we are a little bit more what I call um, integrated to a certain degree because I think people talk more down here but up north I know it's more ghettoized and uh, you have a problem with um, you know whole towns being segregated and obviously when it comes to the grooming epidemic you know I, I, I'm pretty much kind of like very brutal on that and um, I think that is the number one if you were to say to me, what is um, the one factor that kind of unifies a lot of the communities against, let's just say the Asian Muslim community, it's going to be the grooming situation, if I'm being honest with you. I would say that if the grooming situation, you know, if people kind of owned up to it and said, look, we've got a problem, we need to deal with it. Um, people like myself and Tommy Robinson and people like that would just disappear, to be honest with you. Because, you know, we'll just go. Because uh, that, that particular um, problem is so, what I call, um, destructive. Um, because it's affecting so many communities that not tackling it head on is just causing so much division. Like, you know, people are like so angry about it that it's going to explode if people don't start saying, all right, we've got an issue here. Let's deal with it head on and uh, stop being PC and thinking. So... That issue is diff different from what I call that overall uh, extremism and terrorism and stuff. Um, so let me just uh, quickly just talk about this. Let me do something for the artists for a minute. So like I said, what I'm doing, uh, window, light source. And so as you can see, this bit's going to be darker, darker, darker. I'm adding more dark here as well. What I need to start doing now is... Well, I can't do this here um, because it's too complicated. But you can see I've got the hair here. I've still got to add detail into the hair. Uh, so the way I'll do it is to get more darks. 
to highlight the darks because right now it's uh, kind of looks like a, a mass of wool or something it doesn't look like here personally um, so I'm just adding in the kind of darks and stuff that I can do so you can see here I need to make that darker actually so even here that should actually be dark because the shadow will go down um, like I said it is difficult in the sense that um, because I'm not uh, copying a photo uh, per se I'm having to make up the light source which then is a big headache because sometimes I do it wrong and then the drawing kind of looks a bit off and that's one of the things about uh, doing stuff from imagination it is um, yeah, it is, it is difficult. Obviously not brain surgery. You know, some people think it's like brain surgery, for God's sakes. Um, so, yeah, that's my kind of take on the... What I call the kind of racism and uh, ex extremism and the communities, how we can kind of gel together. I think the Sikh community is doing a pretty good job in terms of um, integrating and uh, keeping a keeping our culture as well we don't you don't remember uh, integration doesn't mean assimilation can i repeat that integration doesn't mean assimilation no one is going to make me lose my culture in terms of my history from the punjab in india no one's going to do that i don't care how long i am here i will still having a i will still have that connection with there and nobody should expect me to lose it um but integration is um having that but also respecting your host nation and being willing to fight for that country, willing to, you know, contribute to that country. And you have to, in a way, you know, you've got to at least respect the country. I mean, if you don't love it, respect it at least, because what's the point of being here then if you don't respect the host nation that you're in? Uh, you've got to start, you know, because a lot of people have this uh, mindset, obviously, of the, the, the past and the colonialism. And we know about colonialism, you know. It wasn't a great thing. We know that, you know. We know that. It wasn't great. No one likes being colonised. The Brits didn't like being colonised by the, by the Romans, for God's sakes. But they're still using uh, a lot of things that the Romans left, like the roads and uh, the sanitation and all this kind of stuff. London is uh, was founded by the Romans. So, you know, you know I'm called like an Uncle Tom and stuff. And, um, oh, the white man's using you. And I'm like, you shut up, you idiots. Shut up. You know, uh, that is your own insecurity talking. You think that um, because your mind is so, I'm going to say something, because your mind is so feeble and can be manipulated by people, you think I'm being manipulated. Have you ever thought that maybe I'm manipulating them for my own uh personal uh, uh gains and for my own for me to uh, kind of promote my agenda as well maybe we're both using each other so all of this kind of oh the white man's using you all you're doing is like tommy robinson's little pet poodle no i don't support tommy robinson 100 percent in terms of his ideas um i do when he's in prison i've said whilst he's in prison i'm giving him full support because uh, i don't believe in you know he's the man's down and uh, I believe when a man's down, you give them your support. Do I agree with everything? No, I don't. Uh, I think he needs to kind of change his views on a few things. Because uh, at the end of the day, yeah, no one's going anywhere. Do you understand? To, to the whites uh, and to the Muslims, no one's going anywhere. Everybody's still going to be here. Yeah? No one's being shipped off. And if they were, I'm telling you something straight now. I would be on the side of the people that are being shipped off because I would not allow people be being persecuted and driven out of their homes. So if it ever got to that point, I would switch sides within a second. I would even think about it. So no one's going anywhere. What 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 does need to happen is that people need to start talking, speaking, and um, having honest conversations about why there are so many issues and why uh, people feel threatened and about their culture being lost and all this kind of stuff through kind of mass immigration. Um, whatever anyone says, immigration needs to be eliminate, uh, limited, not eliminated, limited. And people need to be vetted who come in. Uh, that is just common sense, nothing to do with racism, just common sense. Um, 
you can't just have an open uh, open kind of door policy would you let anybody into your house yeah think about it if you had a property or a flat would you just let or a house would you just let anyone come in or would you want to vet those people uh, that is the same thing as a country uh, you cannot just let everybody in and there's people out there that obviously hate the UK because of their colonial past um, and so what they want to do is like screw them let everyone in but that is very short-sighted on your point on your part because you may not be affected by the consequences but your kids may be yeah and future generations will be and they may not feel the same as you so whatever you're doing now is very very selfish and very very so, uh, short-sighted in terms of trying to kind of uh, be vindictive um yeah so people just start flying the bloody flag who cares what everyone thinks just fly it <laughs> If everyone just flew it, black, Asian, whatever, especially during football, I think the football time is a great time to reclaim it. Uh, it's not going to happen overnight and just reclaim it. I I'm not going to do it because uh, just because I'm not a flag kind of guy, man. That's just, I'm not a football kind of guy either. I don't even know what's happening with the football, to be honest. I'm giving up on England when it comes to football. They always lose for some goddamn reason. I know they're doing pretty well now. Uh, that's all I know. Um, so... Yeah, that's pretty much it. I'm back home doing my uh, thing. I've got to get this out of the way. I've got so much. Uh, I've got another few other things, another client's portrait I've got to do him, blah, blah, blah. And uh, obviously, this guy is just eternally having the boot on his face, so he needs to kind of be liberated at some point. Um, I don't want to kind of darken it too much in, uh, in too many areas. Um, yeah, that's about it really in terms of my kind of stance on this uh, problem about communities, communities not. I mean, there's people like, us, like you know, and one of the things I want to say, one thing I've always said is that, you know, I don't know if I'm, you know, people are thick or um, just naive or I don't know what, what to think, you know, because I'm not no brain box for God's sakes, you know, I'm, I'm pretty thick myself sometimes. Uh, and I admit that, but you know, some people just shock me how stupid they are. You know, I, I feel like a genius sometimes when I'm talking to some individuals, like I'm Einstein. And then I, I speak to a really clever, real clever person and I realise I'm thick. Um, about the statistics with the grooming. Let me just say something, you know, and this is going, and I'm not saying Saeed is thick. Uh, but I'm just saying that he's one of the people that doesn't understand statistics uh, about... You know, if the statistics for grooming is that there's a 85% conviction rate for uh, Asian Muslims, yeah, for type 1 um, grooming, that doesn't mean that 85% of the 85% uh, of Muslims are grooming. Do you not understand? It's the conviction rate. The same way that where it says that 99% of the pedophilia conviction rates are from white people, that doesn't mean that 99% of white people, white men, are pedophiles. I don't know why you cannot understand it. It's a conviction rate. Conviction. Do you understand? Someone's gone to court and they've been convicted. How, how hard is that to understand? Um, you know, maybe I'm giving people too much credit. But, you know, there are some very, 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 very stupid people in the world. And a lot of apologists. I won't say the guy's name. Um, I am going to, when I go to uh, Speaker's Corner, I'm going to be very selective now about having conversations about grooming. Because I've realised that it's taken me a while that it's pointless talking to these people. A lot of them are just flat out uh, uh, apologists for rape. Uh, flat out just, some of them I think are just freaking just weird man i'm not going to say because i don't want my video flag but let's just say they haven't got a concept of right and wrong and so it's pointless talking to them uh, what i will do is uh, select my conversations so they're much more productive doesn't mean the person has to agree with me but they need to be productive so when i'm speaking i'm not talking to somebody that just will not accept anything um any kind of facts that you put to them everything you say is pretty much wrong and so um i've got to talk to people that are much more uh let's just say fair in terms of their um uh, kind of under uh, being fair in terms of their 
kind of outlook on this. They're not just fixed in one way. And people can say, I'm fixed in one way. Uh, and maybe I am. Maybe I am. Maybe I'm guilty of that as well. Like I said, human beings are hypocrites, including myself. But I, I, I have so much knowledge on this particular situation that, you know, you can't tell me otherwise, um, especially from a seat perspective. Anyway, so you can see here, uh, hopefully it will be finished soon at some point. For God's sake, it's just an absolute nightmare. Um, anyway, uh, I'll be off then and hopefully people can kind of get a bit from might have learned something, I don't even know. I mean, I've hardly done anything anyway. I never really do anything, I'm always speaking. But I've got a bit of the, the technique down there. Anyway, take care.